Hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? This is another one of those very long videos where I take something completely to bits and then put it back together again. And this particular machine is a DC-19 T2 multi-floor with a different head on it because this should have had, I think, that bog standard, the one that came with the DC-05 and the DC-08. Um, then they changed it and modernised it and put it out with all of these. Like, I, I do have an example somewhere, but it looks like that. You, If you're a Dyson fan, you know what I mean. But this has another head. And apparently it doesn't work very well. So let's see just how well it doesn't work before we get started. So we've got a benchmark to go by. So if I just put that there. this into a suitable power receptacle and turn it on. Well that actually seems to work okay. The lady dropped it off, said it didn't, but I'm not going to tell that it does work because I'm being paid to do this, so it can be refurbished. Clean all that off anyway, all this dust, it needs it. So, to start with, so I can put some washing on, mainly, we need to spit stuff down. So, we shall take the handle off. We shall unclip the hose <coughs> and pull it out. Then work out which way this comes out. Because this will come out one way. They always do. You might use a screwdriver for that. Out. We need to take it off of its bracket. We do. There's a join in it, so I'm wondering if we simply just need to pop it out of some sort of track. Because it should come out. I'd be very surprised if it didn't. I'm also very annoyed because it means I can't put this hose through the wash. Which is part of any good refurbish, but so normally on the other side it just pulls out. Oh, hang on. It's that bit there. Ah, so it does put out towards us. What does it? Oh no, it doesn't. There we go. One hose off of its bracket. This is the same bracket as used in DC08 onwards, so that literally just clips off of there. And that whole hose is ready to be washed. The next thing that we will do, just to get going, is the filter. Now, I'm filming this in August, August the 20 something. August the, hang on, uh, 26th. You can't. And I've had a peek at this earlier. It's probably why it's not coming off, is it? There we go. Ready? Lots and lots of pine needles sitting on this filter. Here is the supposed to be washed pre motor filter. I don't think it's actually ever been washed in its life or even clean. So we shall see how well this comes up. I'm going to go and put this now 
in the washing machine with a lot of towels that need doing on a very long wash. And we shall continue with the strip down while he's doing it. And I'm going to tip that outside. So bear with me a bit. So the hose is in the wash and we can start with the main machine. Now the hose end, it does come apart, but not particularly easily. So it's, it's just as simple to wash it all in the box. Same with the wand. It also comes apart. I mean, we can take off this clip to be able to clean the dust from behind it. Fairly easily. There's a little shallow spring there. But that's as far as it goes. It's all one unit. I mean, if it was mine, I would have a go. But it's not mine, so I'm not breaking it because I'd have to buy a new wand. I don't really want to do that for obvious reasons. So, on with the. There we go. Tilt it down a little bit so you can see what is going on. There we go. So, turn the tabs, pull that back, and this part flips off. Ready for washing. The brush rolls, they twist slightly. Ow! and pull off but you might have to give them a little bit of a helping hand there we go there's the brush rolls they're not too bad i'll be honest i'm only doing this bit of a strip down for completeness with that off we flip it around and undo all the screws that we can see on the top on that on that One up top. One at this end. <coughs> and one at this end. Then the clear plastic cover lifts out as will the turbine assembly. So many little spits in it you can know. However, the earlier heads with the square ones of these are impossible to find because they always go. Now, luckily, we don't need to have the wheels off because this is a pain. Because these are toothed axles, but all the hair gets around it and basically gungs it up. But luckily, we don't need to. So that's a very light strip down of the head now i'm going to see if i can pop you up here so you can see a bit more than my usual rubbish hand skills so we'll take the cyclone off and pop that to one side next okay next we'll take the post motor filter cover off and take the post motor filter out itself i shall be replacing that as I do with all of my strip downs, it's a non-genuine one anyway. It'll have a non-genuine one back in, but it's non-genuine. Next, we... Oh, I forgot about all that. Tickle that out. Yeah, we need to take this cover off. Um, this cover is only held in with some very shallow clips, like so. So that takes off the filter cover. Got my screw box. Then there's one screw here, which is for the tool holder. The parking bracket, I suppose. It's not really a tool holder, is it? And that should just pop out like so. Rubber seal at the back. And that's that's a part. Next, we pull the cable out a little bit. And pop off the wheels, which will be a little bit tight. Don't worry about any alarming noises. They do just snap off quite nicely. 
you need to get the screwdriver nicely down inside and pull. Then undo the two screws that sit inside the axle. One, two. Let's just move it about a little bit. Until, there we go. Oh, no, there we don't go. There we go. The two screws that sit in this axle. Oh, the screwdriver is so much nicer to use. Then there's a screw in here. And a screw up here, just there. There we go. And then the whole back just lifts off like so. However, you can't separate it yet because this is in the way. The cable guide. If you look at the back, you can see a, a plastic clip at the bottom. Just push that up, which releases the cable guide, and then it's not actually together. So you just sit the cable off, pull the cable back through. He says, just wind it back up a little bit to keep it neat, and then the back panel is apart. Now. The pedals are held in with a plastic tab either side and all you do is you just push each tab in turn. It's a lot easier when you're not holding a phone so I shall pop you down and eventually they will just snap out. Let's use another screwdriver. There we go. So there's one with a big spring under it. The other one is much the same, although you can get to it a bit easier. Just push to release the tabs. Push the whole thing out and there's the power button with its big spring. Next is the relief valve. And the easiest way to do this is to put a screwdriver down through the middle and push really hard until that part there falls out, bringing the rest of it with it. Then there's just this little pipe, whose reason I've never quite known, but it's there. It sits, it pops onto there, and then sits in there, like so. But that's done. So, motor. And called V1. This is the same on the DC08. Because the DC19 is basically DC08. Both of these are now very loose, so you can just pull them straight out. The only things left to remove on this are the suction ducts, which has a screw down there. That's pointless, Watson. Sort that out. A screw in there. So I'll have you out. These are all the same screws. But once that screw there is out, there are still, there's one, two, three tabs. You need to sort of manoeuvre and manipulate out until the whole thing slides down. It's this one here that's the main pain in the bum, but there we go. That is moulded on that seal, so you, you can't take that off, you have to wash that hard. And then the only other thing, well, it's supposed to be this little screwdriver gone. I'm using tools, there it is. You can't, it's very difficult to take the wheel axle out, so I don't bother. I just pop this little wheel out, like so. Pop its axle in there, and the wheel is there. And that is the main chassis empty. Like so. Starting to smell carbon dust. 
So that is how the motor assembly and cord wheel one should sit. And you need to release the cables that run around the side. Then pull the two blacks from the switch housing. And then the switch is just held in with a little tab there. And it's just a bog standard Dyson switch. So if you ever break one, it's the same as from a DCO3 onwards, really, probably even some DCO2s. So there we go. There's a link wire which sits under here. And again, these started appearing on very early Dysons. And then you can finally separate both. We don't strip cord rewinds, it's not the done thing, so just a quick paintbrush off. Wind it up a little bit because it's all fallen off. And pop that in the non-washables pile. Pull the motor bucket seal off. You can't pull the fan case seal off yet. We have to release these four tabs which might need a bit of persuasion with a screwdriver. There we go. And then just pull the grommet, pull the wires out of the motor, he says. Why won't you come? Really? Somebody been in here before. These should just pull out. Why are they not just pulling out? What's going on? Maybe it's just stiction. There we go, there's one. Oh yeah, there's a fine layer of greb down there. That's why I find a good handle really. Struggling a little bit. There we go. And then that just pulls out like so. So there's our inner motor, well our, our main motor house I suppose. This part just pops off there. Then we can pull the this is a bit this is a bit damp. Pull the fan case seal off. There we go. And here's our motor which is looking a bit carbony. But ultimately, the armature looks... Yeah, it's not burnt. It's not got... It's not very healthy. But it's not as bad as it could be. And we have just, in 10 minutes, stripped down the main machine. Now for the filthy part. The cyclone off the bin and pull that didn't come fully out there we go pull the two inner cones out and take off this rubber seal for thorough washing because we must always wash things thoroughly so then you can put them back in there and that can act as a nice little bucket now I always try and take off the cone first off any side cone and the reason I take the cone off, and all you do is, you find your tabs, you grip them, and just pull the shroud out ever so slightly until it pops off. And then when you get two, you can just do that. Whoa. Here. And that's mainly so you can sit it up. My God. Look at that. That is terrible. This has been damp. That's what that is. That's just innocent dust. It's got damp and gone cruddy. So there's our cone, and there's another rubber seal that sits just around the top of it. We need to remove. My goodness. This is probably going to set the scene. Next, you want to remove all of the screws from around the top of the cyclone. So one, two, 
sûr. Fait. Seven screws for the eight cyclone system because this is a root eight, I think. So I'll take that off and immediately notice some black stuff that doesn't look too healthy to me. There are two more screws on the back of the handle. this off this part here with the release catch I'm just going to leave all that hole that can be washed and dried by a spring has come out of there and then to get this off you need to gently pull up these two clips here whilst pushing the whole handle forwards And it's a little bit tricky, but it does go eventually. So I'll just crack on at it. He says, checking the no hidden the screw. <laughs> there is a normally. There we go. And then with a sharp tap with the back of your hand, off comes the main handle. And then we can take off these screws. Didn't see those. This is what's different to a DC-19, you see. All these screws are new, I think. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Maybe I should have planned it a bit better. But the opportunity to shoot this video arose one must always take the opportunity that is provided to them when it is provided. That is one of my many rubbish mottos. So there we go. I haven't been counting. I don't think you care how many screws there are. Just undo all of the screws. Every one of them. Every last screw. Get rid of it. Sunk down. You want to have my toolbox at the minute. I'm trying to. Ooh, where'd that come from? There's a bit. We don't care about bits. Now this should just lift off. And it has. And luckily, the DC 19 and the 19 T2 have a proper rubber seal. None of this foam rubbish. Now that was the easy part. This is the filthy part. We need to separate the shroud from the cone. And the way you do that is, unfortunately, to go around and prise it all up. Just keep levering all the way around, it'll be welded on. Oh no, it's not! My bad. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. No, you don't. You find these, flick them forwards, and underneath lies a screw. And there are one, two, three of those. Gosh. Good you're not paying to see this, isn't it? You want your money back. So they are they are short screws. The shortest screws of the entire job. Shortest 
shorty short short shorts now we should have more luck trying this off unless I've missed one I haven't there it goes because it's all welded on by that and once that comes off you can see the inside this is where ooh, fresh if your Dyson stinks there's nothing you can do about it this is what you've got to do because that is the stink right there there's a big rubber seal in there and that's us done don't remove that because you will break it very careful not to remove that we are done folks dc19 t2 is a part so now i'm going to wash it dry it polish it and we shall reassemble it so see you for that in it'll be a second for you it'll be a few days for me so tatty bye for now the washing machine has finished and here is the hose it's pretty damn spotless now smells of nothing which is good but the real difference is the filter this was a two hour seven minute 60 degree cotton wash with a load of towels nearly washing anyway look at that good as new and ready to be dried thoroughly it's about to go in the airing cupboard for a few days and reassembled into the machine so there we go folks don't there's still a pine needle in there look it's a clean pine needle now but there's several pine needles oh bum hats I was hoping to get away with that she probably won't notice it'll be fine it's spotless it smells of nothing which is good it'll be fine so there we go right let's get on with the reassembly so everything is washed polished and laid out for the photo that i use for the thumbnail and also to show you what there is so every single part here is for dc19 we've got the big bits try and pan around slowly we've got the wiring the wand all of the screws that we shall need to put back on all of the small bits and bobs and now we need to put it all together and get on with it in fact we are missing one part hang on here it is we need the turbine for the turbo brush so there we go let me get set up and we shall begin with the cyclone so, to start with the cyclone, hello, we will need the appropriate screwdriver as before and a small flat blade just in case. So, we shall need uh, that part, that part, this part, cone, seal, these two seals this seal, the top of the cones, the oh, lid for the whole thing and maybe some other bits and bobs as and when I remember them so oh yeah the shroud that's a that's a biggie isn't it and the shroud seal we shall start by putting the shroud seal on which goes in here so simply you just put it in there like so okay it just sits in this little groove quite nicely oh fiddlesticks we have i have forgotten something else as well i've got the screw caps for those we'll put those on right at the end i'll go fetch them in a bit Uh, 
Now that's not going in quite right, so I don't think I pushed this seal all the way home. You see, it tells you there's a dice, and if you don't, if it doesn't just click in like a big Lego kit, then you can be fairly sure that something somewhere is not sitting right. Let's try that. So we'll take our our short screws, the three shortest screws that there are. One, don't ram them in very tight yet, just put that out of the way. We don't need that yet, do we? Let's check in the time. Two, there we go. And then three, and I'll get the clips when I have a pause at some point. I can only film for half an hour at a time before I need to start a new one. So there we go, that is the shroud fitted back to there. Next, we need to fit the rubbers. Now these are a little bit fiddly, but it's basically just lining everything up like so, making sure that the stalks go over, go through the hole. There we go, look. Make sure it all sits down nicely, then take the covers and stick that on. Then we need one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of the black screws, which will screw down nicely like so one at a time many people have asked me why I don't have an electric or battery powered screwdriver and A it's too noisy B and the main reason is I always get charged up got some somewhere one only runs off the mains now the other is fine but I always forget to charge them up and then I put it on charge and then do the machine anyway so I've just given up now Plus, occasionally, you do need the finesse of a hand screwdriver. Many a times, I've, even on the lowest torque setting, used my battery powered one and just had a crack as it goes for the last screw. Very, very delicately. We did figure it a piece because we now need to put the handle back on. Now, you need to sort of line it up and then push until it snaps into place like so that should already be lined up roughly then you can take this part here push it down like so and then we just want two more of these black chaps here oh, so we've got another bit look you see this is unprepared but that's why you if you lay it all out you'll know where it all is the amount of times i dug through a big box of parts to find one little missing piece is well a lot and that sits on there we need one two a pattern here three four five six seven again seven there is a pattern it's a conspiracy i tell you so again we shall alternate these just like doing the car head gasket or rocker gasket to push evenly it probably isn't as important as it is on the car let's be honest the worst you have to do here is just adjust it on a car you've then written it off or have to put a whole new engine in it. Go. There we go. Nearly there. Two more. One. This screwdriver is so much nicer to use. There we go. It's looking a bit better now. 
Next we need to take the big rubber seal and pop it back into the cone. Like fiddly so. Which is looking a million times better, I'm sure you'll agree. And then line up one of the little lugs. Just one will do. And as long as one lines up, the rest should follow. He says. Maybe the oh, my seals come off. That'll be why the seals not sitting quite right. Let's stick a little dab of saliva over it. So I don't mind doing now because obviously it's all been impeccably washed. There we go. One, two, three. So there's that part. Now for the bin. Hello. Hello. Little rubber seal here. This big rubber seal goes on the top. Just stretch it over and push it down inside a little bit. Hang on, I'll, I'll try and show you. Goes under that lip. There's a lip in there. And it should all sit quite nicely. And then I think, is this keyed? Hang on, DCO5 one is keyed. No, this isn't keyed. You just push it in. And this is a little bit fiddly. Oh, the stupid rubber seal doesn't want to go in. You can't nip a seal, otherwise it won't work. So just work at it, it will go eventually. No! You might have to swear at it. I won't do that on camera. I'll pause in a second and do it. Oof, did that go? Yes, there we go. Oh, not quite. Oof. We're so close. There's just one little bit here. It's stretched a bit while I've washed it. That's a pain. No, you can't do that. It's not allowed. Come on, I'm filming this. Don't, don't, don't show me up. <laughs> Gah, you win. No, you see that's, that's what that's done there. You see, look, that's that's caught. I'm just going to pause and swear at it a bit. Come here, you little. Right, there we go. The stupid seal is in. It was more difficult than I had anticipated. But we got there, so now what we need to do is just click this closed, which is going to be a bit tight now because the seal is new ish and then it's not seated quite as flat as it was and there we go i just need to put the three screw things back on but we'll do that another day so what next let me just check where you can see good you can see all this motor see if i can get all the bits right first time shall we that that that, that. this 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 that that well definitely that we will need the chassis and of course the motor itself and the cord rewind unit right, so we don't need that part first we need this part first that all nice and clean there we go so first things first i think is to put the wiring loom through and just a gentle tug on the cable until that seal sits just so. With that seal sitting just so. This seal only fits on one way and sits like that. Then again, it's keyed. So 
correspond with the motor bucket inner so I sit that in there first plug the motor in wire to wire like so and then simply sit it in making sure that the two tabs on the motor support aligned with the motor which you can just about do from inside the machine if you look behind the machine so there we go that is now sat nicely this part here will now drop onto the fan around the inside there we go ish might need a little bit of persuasion with your small screwdriver just to there we go just to tuck the rubber all the way around until it sits flush and then you can clip on the motor housing itself which is keyed again this only fits on one way so until all the tabs line up which they just have And then just tease this top part out like so and there is our motor assembly oh nearly forgot this rear rubber like so now oh, we're also going to need the switch it's the cord rewind and it sort of fit together the same and i've now got to try and do it back to front to show you people of course so that has to be at the top and that part there sits in as a little cutout down there so basically as long as that sits in that little cutout like so actually it's not fully secure as in it will move but it's better than nothing I think it all goes around the top so feed the wires back through the clips around the top of the motor there we go. oh that's not going to be right look because they shouldn't be that size so it must be the bottom so you can all oh, no I don't want to do that you can always tell when something's not right. This is actually quite key that I'm showing you how to double check everything in a minute because these, these have a finicky, finicky issue which you'll soon know if you haven't got it right. So let's try again and push the wires into the clips underneath. One, two. Then the red and the white connect and have the little cover put on and that sort of disappears down somewhere we'll tuck it down here I think out of the way of everything and then the switch has the two blacks now again the switch goes a very specific way of which I need to remind myself of I think it goes lengthways different to the DCO8 there we go it goes lengthways but with the tabs facing out and it has to sit in there otherwise the next part doesn't work so we have the motor and the cord rewind wired up we now need to put this pop pop there there this top part back together so we'll start with the little pipe and it pushes on to its little connectory part there uh, how does this go ah that's it it is keyed it's keyed but the molding makes it look like it can go a different way around it can't it only goes on one way so yes that goes on there like that what else do we need let's put the buttons on so 
it sits like that. So this side is the power button. So we need one of the big springs and the power button. And again, this only goes on one way, which is flat to flat. And you can push and it goes in by a process of elimination. Then this must be the core rewind side. Yes, it is. Let's get the release valve assembly now, and the spring goes in there. And that goes in there, and the whole thing. No, it doesn't. I'm lying to you again. The spring goes in first, then this part, then this part. What happens is when the suction gets too strong, it sucks that down away from this. And that's how your bleed valve works. And that just pushes in just a little bit. Just to there. Right, I think that is almost everything. So we shall feed the cable through the hole. Now, let's see. Oh, beautiful. That will fit, or should fit, utterly perfectly. If it doesn't, something is wrong and you have to work out why caught me out a fair number of times it has to sit almost perfectly first time and if it doesn't I'll be honest I'll check the power switch in fact that's not sounding too great so let's just see what's moved it's normally the power switch side it does it that's all right. Have another go. Oh, oh, dear. oh no, it's all going wrong now. There we go. Look, now it's all going to fall apart for me, isn't it? Come on, there we go. Come, we're very close. Let's go back to Oda soon. So, we'll turn the switch itself on. to know now if we put it together and turn it on because I can't feel the switch clicking but it might be so one screw let's do it this way so you can hopefully see two screws at the top I can find the hole there's the hole Three screws, there's one here. Oh, bless my soul, we have done something wrong. We're missing the suction thing, which luckily goes on the outside. I'll tell you what, we're going to test this quickly. Let's put the rest of these screws in, just to hold it in the right position. turn it on quickly and see whether the power button does work before we go any further of course so the core rewind works time so we'll pop the 
cable guide which should just snap in he says Come on. I know it doesn't go in that way round, that's why. Silly, silly me. You should never have to hammer something in. Not the first time anyway. There we go. Lovely. Next is this part which also forms the last screw. And all that does is just slide up to there and this top screw here is actually the one that holds it in position and clamps the whole assembly down very nicely indeed so we can now put the wheels on we can take the filter cover and its little seal and fit them and that just pushes in nicely nicely like so and then this has two tabs you line up now do you remember the filter this is the filter now beautiful that clips on there and clips down like that oh I have forgotten ah, before I have to pause to go and get what I've forgotten put the axle through the little wheel and put the little wheel on the machine so now that that's good we can get a filter and I'm going to fit one of my lovely air fresheners. That's all my people like and love. So I'll pop that there. Pop the filter in. Nice pattern filter. And then clip that in there like so. Then we can clip the cyclo unit on. Like so. And the main machine is done. Let's move on to the head now because that's going to be the next fiddly part. Well, basically, everything now. This is pretty much everything that's left. Ah! Oh. Ooh! Look! That is for. the switch might need to come off oh this isn't coming off there's something not quite right here either I'll have a look at that I reckon that's that seal oh no so we've got to very quickly take this off take the wheels off there you go this is a quick switch removal guide switch replacement guide so we've got to undo all of these screws again fiddlesy that would be why ladies and gentlemen it's not clicking for me see it's always something simple always well, I could edit that out, but what's the point? You might make that same mistake as well. Then you can know that you're not the only stupid one. It happens to us all. And there's no point in just throwing it away and pretending it never happened. Do it right. If you're doing this to your own machine, you won't need to be in here for another 10 years. If you're doing this to somebody else's machine, they might come in here the second you leave and find you out. So, we need to take off. Ooh. the terminals again yeah this makes sense now then the switch clicks in 
Then the wires go, oh, this is a bit more fiddly. On. Oh, this is not as easy this time. There's no slack on that one at all. There we go. Yes, look, that fits much differently. That whole housing clicks into there. I was thinking of DT8, which doesn't have that bit of plastic. You have to light the switch up. Oh, this is, has the negative effect now of making this not a lot dif difficult to get on. Binding up on the power switch, so it will simply push it out and then push it back down. We're moving. Come on, there we go. Right, that's out the way. You've just moved, haven't you? You sod. sits down ah. making me look like I don't know what I'm doing which is correct I don't ah look at it see what I mean bang first time see it's got to fit first time if it doesn't just slot together don't forget this is meant to be made by Malaysians on 50 pence an hour they can probably put one of these together in about five minutes and if they don't they don't get paid so it's got to be simple otherwise it won't work although how that applies to the modern ones I'm not entirely sure I'm sure if you do 500 a day you probably get quite good at it I don't if you see my DC 40 rebuild thread it was very protracted well, that switch feels a bit better now. Let me send the L simply. No. <laughs> We'd miss the tool holder that pushes in there. That would be what this last silver screw is for as well. See the things you see when you redo something. So filter back in. You click down, you click there. We won't put the slide cone on yet because we're going to have to look at that in a minute. Silly. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh now I've got to check the shot um. Okay. Now let's let, let's let's try again with this. So first things first, we need to rebuild up the turbine assembly. <sighs> We need to start with the fans, you need to push it, you'll see the belt sat just in there. You need to make sure that that goes through this. And then the whole thing, it, it turns itself afterwards. Otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Now we need to put the teeny tiny bearing on. 
and then push this part on and again it is keyed so you have to line up all the slots like so and then the whole thing pushes home check at every step of the way that it turns so if it doesn't you will know about it now line up that part same with this part it is keyed there is a notch there that lines with a notch there and then when you push it down the rubber seal should sort itself out but it hasn't so just a gentle flick until it does Well, I'm sorry about that, my phone has just been booted. And I noticed, checking the last video, that it wasn't quite in the sink, but I'm not stripping the whole thing down again. And it did miss me, after pushing that bit on, and then checking the operation, just clipping that on, and then doing that. Then we fitted this seal there, that one there. And now I was showing you, literally, when it turned off, Look how shiny that is. And that just sits in there. And then this part will be a bit fiddly. I might need a bit of persuasion. In fact, I'm sure I remember harping on about one side of this coming off, but I don't think this one does. They've changed it. To show you, it's a lot easier when half of it comes off. A lot easier. Now we've got to sort of prise it out a bit and then push it. Ow! Stab yourself in the hand, that's always fun. There we go. So we have our little hose in place. I'm paranoid now. Hang on. Is that still recording? Yes, it is. I've turned the flash off. I think it got too hot. So I just turned the flash off. Oh, look, I have look, blood. We have done it properly. You always know you're good when there's blood. So, before that goes in there, we have these two rubber seals to go in. The first rubber flappy one simply pushes in there, and then this chap here goes around in there. I think I'm too far forward. Oh, crying, Charlie! He had a wet bum. Father dear, I do believe I have soiled myself. So, where were we? Oh, yes, we are pushing in. It's not me. Just like this, there. There we go. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, that just sits around there like that. Then this part goes on. Doesn't really do a lot at the minute. Until you put this part on, and then in theory, with the rest of the screws, on it goes. So hopefully the phone issues will be over now because this is the next day and I finished pushing the screws in. That's pretty much where we got up to. So now we need the brush rolls which have been well, trying to hold them more fancy, which have been cleaned up. 
clean linted. We may pop on. Now, as you will see, one side has gone on fine. This side hasn't. And um, before you force it, swap them round, and you should find that they just go on. Don't know why, but they do. Push and twist like so. Check they rotate, obviously. Then put the base plate on, being sure to line up the front. And then it should just push down. You might need to relocate the tabs. This part needs to be pulled back and then pushed over the locking tab. Turn those and that is our floor head done. All we took off the wand was the red part. Now this red part actually knocks it. Very simple wand design this is. That metal end. Let's see if I can line it up. Locks into there. The spring pushes it down all the time so it locks into one of the notches. So you just pop the spring on. And basically just push down on there. And as you can see, it pushes down and locks. We are getting there folks. Now for the hose. And we need to position the clip. So we need to get the machine. Like so, let's move over a little bit so you can see. And the easiest way to do this is feed the hose through the clip and clip it down. Then you're basically dry fitting it. So you can see roughly where it needs to go. So that, where my thumb is, is the edge. So you want to, oh, you want to position it that way round. So this thicker part here is at the top, I think. I don't actually know, we'll find out. Either way, place it roughly on the hose, a little bit down from where it was. Was right, and then push it in until it clicks, and this part should still be nicely secured up the top, running down the machine, and then you can pop the bin back on and be sorted. In amongst the video issues earlier on, I did sort out why the cyclone wasn't me to go with the bin, the seal was the wrong way around, so I took it. Took, took the bin off, took the shroud off, flipped the seal around, but it actually fitted much better, and now the bin fits. So, little tip there. Check your seals on the right way around. This will fit that into there. We shall fit this into here. Fit this into there, and we are done. Just take you on a little tour if I take you on. I broke my tripod. I'll just pull look that there's the nut that should sit in the bottom of the part I'm holding. I have a new one in the post. Look, I've even used look, there's my little rubbish GoPro, but look, the mounts are excellent. So I'm making I made a tripod out of a dining chair. So here we go. Won't fire it up tonight. I shall do one last bit tomorrow just to show it running, but look, it is basically as clean and as shiny and as new as it can possibly be. It's actually come off all right. It was very clean under all that dirt. Very clean indeed. So the head is now spotless. And all in all, hopefully, it will be worthwhile. So let us see how she performs and check that it, nothing is amiss. If there's no suction, we've got to go investigating. Let's hope there is. And now we must test it while Charlie eats his tea. Assuming it all runs okay, let me just take 
the wand off the hose so we can test the suction. Suction's so good it can lift up quite a heavy cushion and it smells amazing now as well with that air freshener. I haven't got my tripod set up so hang on let me just there we go. Does the turbo head work? That is a million times better. There's even, wow, a fair bit of dirt in the bottom of the bin. Whoops. Never mind. We'll call that testing dirt. We shall. So, there we go. Hope this very long video has helped you. Whether you just like watching my videos, you just like vacuum cleaners, or you have used some of these tips to get your DC-19 fighting fit once more and ready for another decade of cleaning. The video is also quite suitable for the DC-08 as well because that's under the, um, some of the other cylinders. All the cylinders like this are basically the same before they went to the ball. So there we go. This can go back to my way. I can get my money and we can get on with the next video. So thank you very much for watching as always. And I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.